I will be lying if I told you that I understand the hype about this little phone here. The CMA phone one came out like a few days ago and everyone is just talking about it, like what's so special about this phone? So I decided to get it and give you my honest opinion and review about this device that costs like barely $200 and see if it's actually worth it. So starting off with the build quality of this device and I have a few thoughts here, especially when you're holding this phone for the first time in your hand, you're gonna probably notice two things. That it feels very premium and very cheap at the same time. Now, why premium? Well, mainly because of the design itself. I believe that nothing has really outdone themselves when it comes to designing their phones. And uh, even when this phone costs barely 200 bucks, I can see how much thought they have put inside of this design. And this is very amazing. But at the same time, when you're holding it in your hand and you realize that it's barely 200 grams and that it's all made out of cheap plastic, uh, yeah, I mean, it feels a little bit like a toy and you cannot deny that. So far so good, but now we have to talk about the back and this back is actually interchangeable. You can remove the back entirely by removing these screws here and you can put a different color or you can unscrew this knob here and attach different types of accessories provided by nothing. But I just see so many problems when it comes to this, like for example, this phone is stripped away of all of its protection when it comes to dust and water. So. Forget about splashing this device with water or keeping it in some dusty places. Something is somehow going to enter inside of this device here and break it, most likely. And the other problem that I have with this is that even though they are selling interchangeable bags and uh, um, different types of accessories for this device, you actually have to pay for them. And they're not cheap. I mean, it's so easy for me to just buy a case for $2 off of AliExpress then actually get another bag for this phone for 20 or 30 dollars more and, and the third problem i see with the removable bag is actually a missed opportunity they could have made it so that you can remove the battery and swap it with another battery or just replace it entirely after a while when the phone uh, gets uh, slower and the battery starts losing its health but no they didn't decide to do that oh and one small details about the interchangeable bag it's really really hard to take this thing off like if you haven't done this thing before then it will take you a solid 10 to 15 minutes just to take this back off and then put it back together and you still have the chance of breaking it in the process because this plastic here is a little bit fragile and while you're screwing or unscrewing the bolts there is a chance that you're gonna break something it's just way easier to snap on a case on this device instead of just meddling with the pack itself speaking about the display and here is where i'm super impressed with this uh, phone like i don't know how they did it but this is a 6.67 full hd super amoled display with 120 hertz of refresh rate and everything feels super smooth no matter what you do with it so i'm really happy with the display itself it doesn't get too bright the maximum is 2000 nits so outside it's not one of the best on the market probably but hey we're still talking about 200 dollars here so you cannot really expect much more and the only problem i've seen is actually with the bezels but that's just nitpicking. I mean, if you ignore the big bezels around the display here, then this is a perfectly usable display, super smooth, super responsive, and uh, I'm actually really loving it. And when it comes to watching any YouTube videos or some Netflix action, this phone also delivers. And I'm honestly super happy with it. Coming from an iPhone 15 Pro that uh, is barely 6.1 inches to this behemoth of 6.67 inches, and I'm starting to really miss my big screens. So any type of media consumption on this device is amazing and you're gonna have a great time with this device, I am 100% sure. Now before we proceed with this video, I would like to quickly mention that most of you are still not subscribed to my channel and uh, if you guys believe that I bring any sort of value with my video then it would mean the world to me if you just click that subscribe button down below and like my video. Thank you so much and let's proceed. What I don't like about it is actually the speakers and that's because we have just a single speaker down here in the bottom which is very easy to block with your finger and that's a little bit annoying. Next side and there's also this action button which surprisingly I really love because I can just hold it and it's gonna instantly go inside of my camera in video mode like this is one of the best features of iPhone that you can customize this. Now before we continue I would like to quickly mention the sponsor of this video Fast Comet. Now, Fastcomet is a hosting company that you can use to create your own websites from blogs to shops to literally any type of project that you might have and I know that because I'm using them myself. 
They offer an amazing 24-7 customer and technical support that you can rely on. They are cheaper than most bigger hosting companies out there like GoDaddy, SiteGround and Bluehost. So make sure to give them a try from the link in my description below and that way you can also support me as a creator. Now let's get back into the video. One of the key selling points of this device, definitely the software in my opinion. Like this is the Nothing OS 2.6.0 slapped on top of Android 14 and I haven't seen a better skin on a device. Uh, maybe the only exception will be Google Pixels, like because they're stock Android, but the attention to detail here is just mind blowing. Like just look at how when you press the power button, the animations just go like super smoothly. And this is a $200 phone, mind you. Oh, and let's not forget about a best feature and that is that this phone comes out with absolutely zero bloatware out of the box which is honestly already beating like half the other brands out there which put at least one or two apps and some of them even 10 apps pre-installed. Oh, and by the way, two years worth of Android updates here and three years worth of security updates only, so keep that in mind. Moving on to the performance of this device and the CMF1 sports a MediaTek Dimensity 7300 chip inside there which is more than capable of running most of your gaming and also makes sure that your phone runs smoothly at all times. I've seen a few glitches here and there, I've seen a few stutters, but overall this phone has performed quite well when it comes to day-to-day -day use and also when it comes to gaming. I have tested it with the new like heaviest game on the market right now, which is Wuthering Waves. Now this is the one that replaces Genshin Impact, but uh, they're pretty much on the same level when it comes to heaviness and when it comes to how much your phone is pushed during these games. So I've tested that game and also a few other games like Call of Duty, PUBG, etc. And this phone seems to perform quite well. Now it's not the best thing in the world, of course you're looking at $200 here, but overall you're getting a quite nice performance out of this device, especially if you turn on the gaming mode. So for my fellow gamers out there, just lower down the settings to low to medium to get that smooth 60 FPS. And uh, if you want to run it at like the highest settings, then maybe look at something else like, for example, the Poco F6. And lastly, we're gonna be taking a look at these camera lenses. Um, single camera lens, by the way, like there is one main camera lens and a depth sensor on this device with a resolution of 50 megapixels. But of course, by default, it's the usual 12 megapixel with pixel binning. And the images I receive from this camera lens are okay. Like, that's the word that I would describe it with. They're okay, they are not the best, they're not the worst. The software processing here is quite nice for a device of this price range. The photos in good lighting are turning out pretty nice, but as usual, the moment that you start reducing the light in a specific shot, everything just turns to a mess. And uh, unless you use the flash or maybe an external lighting source, you are not going to achieve great results. So what about the video quality? Well, I would say the same as with the photos. Not too good and not too bad. Like the software processing is on point here, but I do appreciate that they have included 4K 30fps recording because usually smartphones in this price range do not give you the option to record 4K, so this one has 4K 30 and 4 HD 60fps, which is very appreciated. And I believe that for this price range, this phone actually does pretty, pretty well. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. So here's a sample of the front facing camera. It's full HD 60 FPS and I'm outside on a bright sunny day. As you can see, so it's basically perfect conditions. It, it's not gonna get better than that. And I believe it's quite nice. The colors seem a little bit washed out, but overall the details seem fine. Still, let me know what you guys think. So in the end, who is this device for? Well, in my opinion, it's a great first device for your kid or for anyone who doesn't want the best performance, the best cameras, the best out of everything. If they just want a reliable phone for their day-to-day -day tasks, then this one is the perfect smartphone. Just mind that this device is not particularly durable, so I'll be careful with it. But hey, anyway, you're not breaking the bank. So, And if you're in the market for something a little bit more powerful or with slightly better camera systems, then you can click right here. And thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Have a wonderful day and week ahead. Bye-bye.